Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'd like to thank the honourable member uh, for the question, Mr. Speaker, sir. It's unfortunate that the three musketeers aren't here, sir, uh, to hear the response, because they're the ones who've been harping on about it. Uh, sir, it is important to know the Fiji Bureau of Statistics, with technical assistance from the World Bank, a revised poverty measurement methodology in 2019-2020 household income expenditure survey to align with international and regional best practices. Amongst other things, Mr. Speaker, so one of the major changes to the methodology, sir, included the use of household consumption aggregates to measure poverty in place of income aggregates. Prior to 2019-2020, sir, HIES, Fiji had been the only Pacific Island country, sir, still using income aggregates to measure poverty. There is consensus that consumption measures given, gives a much more reliable uh, estimate of poverty itself, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, um, the, according to the 2019-2020 HIES results previously released by FBOS, Fiji's basic needs uh, poverty line stood at $2,179.93 per adult equivalent per year or $41.91 per, per, per week, sir. Estimated on this BPNPL, the poverty headcount for Fiji was initially estimated at 29.9% in 2019-2020, which means that an estimate 258,053 individuals were living in poverty at the time of the survey. Furthermore, at the household uh, level, 45,724 households, or 22.9 percent, living below the poverty line. Mr. Speaker, sir, recently the World Bank's Poverty and Equity Global Practice Team detected a discrepancy in the coding during a cross-check review exercise to ensure that Fiji's survey remains in line with international practices. According to a statement from the World Bank, sir, Fiji's original consumption aggregate released by FBOS was underestimated due to the omission of select non-food items resulting from a coding problem that unfortunately was not identified earlier on. The consumption aggregate for 2019-2020 HIAS was adjusted, to ensure, adjusted sorry, to ensure that all types of household expenditure were fully accounted for. Technically, Mr. Speaker, sir, the review identified that in the consumption aggregate estimated from the 2019-2020 HIES, expenditure on four non-food categories, utilities, which is electricity, gas, water, garbage collection, communications, which is telephone, TV, internet, and postal, domestic services and education, including school fees and books, etc., was only included for households that spend on all subcategories because of the coding issue. The revised expenditure measures now represent total spending on any of these items, which should have been done in the first place. As a result, Mr. Speaker, sir, Fiji's poverty rate has been revised downward from 29.9% to 24.1%. This is the accurate figure. The national poverty line remains virtually unchanged, sir. Due to the relatively uniform distribution of non-food expenditures among the households in the original and revised reference group used to calculate the poverty line. Poverty estimates were also revised downwards in both urban and rural areas with larger decreases in urban areas than in rural areas both in absolute and relative terms. This differential impact by area has resulted in a higher concentration of poverty in rural areas, with the rural population now accounting for 68% of Fiji's poor. So, Mr. Speaker, so what do the results show? Although the results of the 2019-2020 HIAS are not directly comparable given the change in methodology, we can make some broad inferences. Firstly, extreme poverty is almost non-existent in Fiji. The World Bank defines extreme poverty as a person living on less than $1.90 a day. Secondly, the poverty rate has stood, Mr. Speaker, sir, sorry. Sec uh, secondly, the poverty rate stood has always been 24.1% as per the 2019-2020 HIES. The earlier reported figure of 29.9% was incorrect. This is, Mr. Speaker, sir, one of the lowest levels of poverty ever registered in Fiji. <coughs> Fiji's poverty trend, is, Mr. Speaker, sir, is as such. In 2001 and 2003, the poverty rate was 35%. 2008 and 2009, sir, it was 31%. In 2013 and 2014, it was 28%. In 2019 and 2020, Mr. Speaker, sir, it's 24%. The most important finding, Mr. Speaker, sir, from this correction is that based on current population estimates, it is clear that under the Beni Marama government and the Fiji First government, almost 100,000 Fijians have been lifted out of poverty, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, sir, 
100,000 Fijians. And this, this is a result of the nine years of growth that they don't understand. Mr. Speaker, sir, lifting, lifting 100,000 Fijians, sir, out of poverty is no small feat. It is a direct result of the nine years of consecutive economic growth and various social empowerment initiatives like true free education, Mr. Speaker, sir, like true free education. The leader, the, the leader for uh, Honorable Prasad claimed there was free education, then he had to correct himself. This is the first time that we have people in Fiji actually getting free education, sir, free transportation, free textbooks, Mr. Speaker, sir, where electricity rates are subsidized for households below the, who earn less than $30,000 a year, 50%. Water is subsidized, sir, directly affecting those people who live below a particular income level. That's where the assistance is coming, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker said, of course, we had before pandemic the one of the lowest rates of unemployment, 20 in 20 years. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would also like to take this opportunity officially to apologize to the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, sir, by the unbecoming public attack by Honorable Prasad and the Fiji Times questioning the integrity of the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, sir. They have fully explained in detail in the press release but because it does not fit their narrative, and of course now Honorable Gavoko's narrative, they just simply then started blaming everybody else. Mr. Speaker, sir, it was actually quite shameful for us. Here is the World Bank now lending us, Mr. Speaker, sir, rates at, on the uh, concession rate is 0% interest rate, with a 0.75% service fee, Mr. Speaker, sir. 40 year terms, 10 year grace period. Mr. Speaker, sir, again, the, uh, uh, the Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, sir, went on a diatribe regarding this. Mr. Speaker, sir, we want to emphasise to Parliament that contrary to the public ramblings of Honourable Prasad, government played absolutely no part in the revision of the poverty statistics. How can we do that? I mean, it's so, un, you know, it's so out of this world. Honourable Governor said, which world are we living in? Which world are we living in to say that I can go along from Fiji, a, a country with less than one million people, to go to the World Bank and say, hey, guys, just change the figures? <laughs> it's so incredulous. It's so incredulous to say that, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, we cannot. We, 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 we cannot. Honorable Gawoka, we don't say there is no poverty. We said 24% poverty rate, Mr. Speaker, sir. We did not re-engineer, Mr. Speaker, sir, HIA's findings to suit our agenda. In fact, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were just as surprised as anyone else. I mean, although when the figures did come out 29%, we were quite surprised. But we accepted it. The World Bank has worked with FBOS. We, we, we accepted it because we thought actually it would come down. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, the coding error, of course, has picked this up. And Mr. Speaker, sir, obviously, when the FBOS uh, uh, released these figures originally, uh, we had, in fact, voiced our strong opposition to some of these findings particularly in the area of disaggregation. See, they all, none of them actually went on about the actual findings of it. They did not talk about rural poverty, maritime poverty, deep rural poverty, which are the areas, for example, in the urban and peri-urban areas that there is poverty, Where, which children in which areas eat one meal a day, two meals a day, who walk five kilometers to get to the bus or walk less than one kilometer to get to the bus. All these important statistics were there. None of them spoke about it. Honorable Randondro led the charge, all about ethnicity, all about the, whoever was leading FBOS at that point in time. Nothing about, about the country as a whole from a macro perspective. Nobody looked at that, Mr. Speaker, sir. And that is the problem, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, reducing poverty to negligible levels will, of course, remain a key objective of government. It should remain a key objective of any government, Mr. Speaker, sir. And, Mr. Speaker, sir, the take home point, of course, is this the revised figures, it confirms, it confirms what the Honourable Prime Minister has been saying, what all the ministers have been saying, that the policies of the Fiji First Government are actually working. Yeah. Yeah. Lifted 100,000 people, lifted 100,000 people out of poverty. Very basic things like what the Minister for Rural Maritime Development does, building footpaths, getting people access, giving people access through roads, to markets, much cheaper way, Mr. Speaker, so they're able to get more for the produce, and giving, providing free education, Mr. Speaker, sir. All of this lifts up people out of poverty, creates opportunities for them, Mr. Speaker, sir. So I'd like to, Mr. Speaker, sir, I hope that clarifies the, the question that was asked in, in respect of 
how the poverty levels in Fiji, in fact, Mr. Speaker, sir, have been uh, revised by the World Bank and how poverty, in fact, in Fiji has been reduced. Thank you, sir.